It's Friday, July the 11th, 2014. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, and this is episode number 42 of TEN, Transport Evolved News for the week beginning July the 7th. 2014. The 2015 model year of Nissan's popular Leaf electric car was given its official pricing this week, with all trim levels getting a minor price increase on last year's model. Starting from $29,010 before US federal and state incentives, the base model 2015 Leaf is $30 more expensive than last year, while the top spec SL trim gets a $100 price increase to $35,120 before incentives. Spec wise, there are very few differences between the outgoing model and the New Year's Leaf, although Bluetooth is now standard across all models, as is B mode engine braking. SV and SL trim adds a new hands free text message assistant too. While prices aren't that much higher than last year's car, we note two of the most popular options, the Charger Upgrade Package and Premium Package, are both $500 more expensive than last year's model, so do be careful of that one if you're ordering a new Leaf. It's super sexy, it's powered by a total of 811 kilowatts of electric motors, and can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 2.8 seconds, and now the Rimac Concept 1 supercar is coming to a Formula E track near you very soon. No, it's not a last minute change of car for the inaugural FIA approved electric car race season. The Rimac Concept 1 is going to be assuming track duties as track car to provide official transportation to the race director at each event. According to Formula E, the four wheel drive electric supercar will help the race director carry out track inspection, take the occasional passenger around the course and attend other important duties before, during and after the race. I knew I had the wrong job. Volvo's upcoming revision to its popular XC90 crossover SUV, the 2015 XC90, will be available in plug-in hybrid form. That's according to Volvo, which announced that the all-new XC90 range will be topped by the XC90 T8, a performance-oriented twin-engine plug-in capable of sporty performance and zero-emissions motoring. Volvo hasn't detailed prices or options yet, but it has said that the T8, powered by a 2-litre, turbocharged, supercharged 4-cylinder engine and a 60kW rear-mounted electric motor, will be the cleanest 7-seat SUV on the market today. Expect more in the coming months, including details on what it will actually look like, because Volvo hasn't yet given us full-frame photos, and how much you'll have to save to own one. Daimler's second all-electric car, the Mercedes-Benz B-Class Electric Drive, has been given its official gas mileage rating by the EPA this week. At 87 miles per charge, the B-Class Electric Drive goes a little further per charge than its nearest rival, the all-electric BMW i3, but far heavier than its fellow German rival, the B-Class loses out in terms of efficiency, scoring just 84 miles per gallon equivalent. In case you're interested, that's far less than the efficiency of the Tesla or the Nissan Leaf. Talking of Tesla, however, the B-Class electric drive shouldn't be overlooked, since its drivetrain and motor are Tesla engineered. And while 0 to 60 times aren't particularly Tesla-rific, the B-Class electric drive features the same range charge mode found in the Model S as an optional extra, meaning you can squeeze out some extra range when you really need to. German automotive rivals BMW and Daimler announced a new joint program into wireless electric car charging technology this week. Capable of recharging an electric car without wires, inductive charging technology makes it possible to recharge your car simply by parking over a special charging pad embedded in the ground. While inductive charging technology hasn't made it to mainstream automotive world just yet, BMW happily shared details of the current progress made on its wireless charging system. To date, says BMW, it has successfully charged a BMW Active E, BMW i3 and BMW i8 plug-in hybrid. For now, the wireless charging technology being developed by BMW and Daimler is limited to just 3.6 kilowatts, but the pair of automakers are hopeful the power will soon be turned up to 7 kilowatts, bringing it in line with the AC conductive charging capabilities of the BMW i3 and i8. Just don't expect to see it in any production vehicles just yet because there are not quite yet fully ratified international standards on charging your car wirelessly. It's been on sale since early 2013, but the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid, which has yet to make its North American debut, will get a major refresh before it goes on sale in the land of the free late next year. That's according to Mitsubishi North America, 
which says that the all-wheel drive plug-in SUV will be completely different to the Outlander plug-in hybrid currently on sale in Europe, Asia and Australia. While Mitsubishi isn't ready to talk specifics yet, general wisdom around the refresh involves a few cosmetic nips and tucks to make the plug-in style match that of the rest of the Mitsubishi SUV fleet, a tweak to the onboard battery management system to make it compliant with tough Californian regulations, and perhaps a few software modifications to make the car even more refined than it is over on this side of the pond. If it's anything like the Outlander plug-in hybrid we drove a few weeks back, however, we think it'll sell pretty well. So watch this space for more info. Own a Nissan Leaf in 10 cities throughout the US, and you'll now be able to charge for free at more than 2,600 public charging stations, including more than 200 Chadamo DC quick chargers. That's thanks to Nissan's all new No Charge to Charge program, which has just officially launched in San Francisco, Sacramento, San Diego, Seattle, Portland, Nashville, Phoenix, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston and Washington DC. The project makes use of specially made Easy Charge RFID tags, which Nissan is giving away to customers at its dealerships throughout the 10 launch markets. While you'll only be able to get a free Easy Charge card if you're a Leaf owner in one of those 10 cities, Nissan says it has plans to expand the program to include other cities in the coming months. Computer security conferences, where industry professionals and hackers join together to attend presentations and workshops on computer software and hardware security, have long offered prize funds to individuals capable of remotely hacking their way into a supposedly secure system. Usually, the target of the challenge is a particular operating system program or smart device, but at this year's SciScan 360 conference, there's a $10,000 prize fund waiting for the first person who successfully hacks their way into a brand new Tesla Motors Model S. While the conference is taking part in China, which is arguably Tesla's biggest market outside the US, Tesla itself isn't officially taking part in or supporting the competition. With a large internal team devoted to proactively working to keep its Model S safe from hackers, not to mention a full vulnerability disclosure program designed to make sub reporting security flaws easier, Tesla appears ready for the hacking competition. Only time will tell if it's ready enough. Cadillac's luxury ELR range extended coupe is proving to be a bit of an albatross for General Motors. Not only does the $76,000 luxury plug-in have a bit of an image problem, but Cadillac just isn't selling enough of them. In fact, the last time we checked, there were more than two years worth of Cadillac ELRs in GM inventory, far more than the industry norm of a month or two. So, in order to try and shift more, Cadillac dealers are offering what we can only describe as massive, and we do mean massive, incentives to try and encourage people to get behind the wheel for the first time. As reported by GMVault.com, some dealers across the US are offering up to $13,500 or more in discounts off MSRP to try and get customers to pick the ELR over other models. Add in federal and state grants, and most ELR buyers currently stand to get the 76 grand car for less than 55. But when you can buy a base model Tesla S for a similar price, we're suspecting Tesla still has a bigger draw for most of its customers leaving us all wondering how long it will be before GM admits the ELR has been a total, unmitigated disaster. In case you didn't know, 158 years ago this week in a town in Croatia, a little boy was born who would change the face of the world forever. That boy grew up to become world-famous inventor and father of both the wireless power transfer and the AC motor, Nikola Tesla. But what do you buy a 158-year-old inventor to celebrate his happy day? The answer, if you're Tesla Motors CEO Elon Musk, is to agree to install a supercharger station at the soon-to-open Tesla Museum, a non-profit endeavour set up in 2012 by Oatmeal comic creator Matthew Inman to turn the site of Tesla's former workshop into a museum in Tesla's honour. And if that wasn't enough, Elon Musk also promised to donate $1 million of his own money to the museum, something which I think would make any birthday party go with a bang. Happy birthday, Tesla, and Nice move, Elon. That's it for the week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. And in the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the Evolve Transport news that's fit to print. Subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube and join us for our talk show when we'll be discussing these stories and others later today on Transport Evolved. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield and until next time, stay juiced up. <laughs>